Hi folks, so I'm back here on the bench. I have here a Cambridge Audio CD player. This is a Cambridge Acer 650C. It's a nice player. And uh, while I generally don't work on things that have moving parts, because as I'm fond of saying, I'm not good at working on things that have moving parts like tape decks or women. So I tend to uh, shy away from these, but the owner told me that uh, it doesn't power up at all. And as you've seen, power supplies can cause a range of problems in, uh, in a lot of things. So we're gonna look at the power supply in this. I'll show you where I think the problem is. Uh, again, there's no service literature available for this. So um, we have to wing it. In cases where a unit has remote function, Part of the power supply has to stay active all the time to power up the infrared receiver so it can watch for pulses from the remote. And looking at this, it appears that the rest of the board, and, and I'm sure the infrared control is either somewhere here or possibly on this servo board, but I believe it's gonna be here. Um, I believe the power for that's coming into here and I don't measure anything. So I'm also going to take a look here. These fuses all checked okay. That's the first thing you check on things like that. But um, I believe we're going to find a problem on here. So I'm going to have to pull this board out so I can look at the back and see what's going on because without a schematic, I'm really not sure what's what. But I don't measure any 120 volt when I measure from ground here to either one of the terminals on the switch. Could be the switching to neutral. I don't really know. Um, Again, we're just gonna have to take a look at this and see what we can find. When I first looked at this, I was afraid there might be a problem with this transformer. This small transformer here is part of the always on circuit that powers the uh, usually five volt power supply for the remote receiver. This is the uh, toroidal power transformer for the rest of the unit. And um, I couldn't really check the primary side because they have it uh, insulated over here, but I didn't think I was getting anything out of the secondary and I was afraid something had happened to this because remember, whenever this is plugged in and this switch is on, this is always energized. But for whatever reason, I am getting five volts AC out of here, which should be sufficient. However, when I me measured here, I got almost a dead short. So I'm gonna start back from here and check and see what might be shorted. Uh, there's a small capacitor here that may be the culprit. This regulator might be bad. Uh, I'm just gonna see where these two wires come out and work my way back from there. Well, yeah, it was one of those good news, bad news situations in that I discovered that if I unplug this connector here, that I can now get my five volts coming off of this board. So if we go here, and there we go, come on. I have trouble digging into this connector, but you can see we got our five volts here. So that's the good news. Bad news is that means there's probably a problem on the front of the board. And the front of the board goes all the way across and chances are it's filled with surface mount components, but there's something shorted here that's killing the five volt supply, which is why we can't get this thing to turn on. Okay, so I got the front panel detached. There were a whole lot of screws that came out here. And then I had to disconnect this from the power supply board, uh, this from uh, the main board, and this from the CD servo board. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the system I use. Anyone that's watched my channel knows I create a large bag to put all the parts in. Each bag inside has all the different parts. This is from the cover. These are individual bags, the screws that came out of the chassis that held the cover on, the ones from the back, the ones from the front. And I put everything in one bag. And this way, when I go to put things together, I no longer seem to have leftover parts and I know where everything goes because all the bags are marked. These are the screws that from the front panel. It says front on the bag, inside. These are the screws that held the transport in place which are shorter and different from the other pan head screws that held the rest of the cover on. So now we're gonna have to get into this. I wanna speak a little bit about ESD. ESD is a very real thing. You could damage components easily just by touching them from the static charges your body holds. Um, that being said, I'm down here in South Florida. The humidity 
in the morning is close to 100%. It's usually in the 90s. Um, now that it's getting closer to winter, it maybe drops to the 80s. Point being, when you have a lot of humidity, ESD is at a, at a minimum. If you ever lived up north, you know that you used to get shocks from the carpet and touching doorknobs and things only in the winter. In the summer, it wasn't really a problem. So I don't worry that much about ESD in this climate. That being said, I still usually wear a wrist strap when I'm working on these, but I'm not as worried as I would be if I was somewhere like Arizona, New Mexico, where the humidity is extremely low. Okay, so I'm trying to trace the short circuit that's on this board. Our power supply comes in here. If you look at the back here, it says ground and 5 volt down there. I'm not sure how well you can see that. But anyway, I was able to go through the board using my meter and I'll try to uh, keep from having focus issues. But anyway, what I discovered, and I'll show close-ups of this as I go along, is that this track along here, I ended up pulling the display off. So this is not part of the circuit anymore. I still had my short and I discovered that these links right here Link two, I could lift, and that would lift the five volt. That goes right up to here. We have test points, ground and five volt here. And then I also discovered that some of these chip resistors are actually jumpers. Uh, they say zero ohms, and they just use those because they can be placed by the same machine that replaced that places all the other surface mount components. I'm not sure why they went with jumpers like this here. Um, don't know. But anyway, I was able to lift one of those chip resistors from right here. And I believe the problem is this integrated circuit here. This is a surface mount chip re uh, shift register. And it's an off the shelf component. Um, I've ordered two of them in case I destroy one putting them on. I have very little experience working with surface mount. So even though I don't have the tools to do this, I ordered some low melt solder. You might have seen uh, something called Chip Quick. It's basically a, an alloy that melts at a much lower temperature than solder. And you glop it all around here and it's supposed to stay molten for up to 10 seconds, giving you time to remove the component. Uh, removal is going to be the hard part. And then of course I have to place it just right and try to solder it back in. But I have um, a fair amount of confidence I'm going to be able to do that. So I was able to take the meter and I got the um, data sheet for this. And if you look between ground here, ground, I'm sorry, VCC here and ground, the meter showing us 1.9 ohms. And I believe this is our problem. Um, being able to lift jumpers and uh, take off these little uh, surface mount jumpers was a uh, real help in getting to isolate where the problem is. So now if I go to the ground and 5 volt, we get, I think it's something like 1K. Yeah, 1.1K. So that should be good. The power supply shouldn't have any problem dealing with that. I'm hoping that that low melt solder will arrive today and I can at least take this off. My mouse order will not be here until Wednesday or Thursday. Um, of course, I'll probably have all this done before I publish the video, but this is where it stands right now. So that's how I was able to trace the short out. I believe it's here. There are very few other components on this board that could cause the problems we're seeing. There's a surface mount transistor here, a small regulator that takes the 5 volt down to 3.3. But everything else are either resistors or ceramic capacitors that have a very low failure rate. So pretty sure, pretty confident this is our problem. We're going to find out. I got the the um, surface mount shift register off the board and I'm happy to report that this appears to have been the problem. I bought some low melt solder. I've never used this stuff before but it worked well. And the theory of this stuff is that you, and it melts at 78 degrees centigrade which on this side of the world means about 172 degrees Fahrenheit and it mixes with the solder on the board and it stays molten long enough for you to get the component off. So I got this off 
and um, I put back the jumper here. I couldn't find the SMD zero ohm uh, surface mount resistor that goes in there. I just put a piece of uh, component lead there. That's just as good. And I verified that now our short is gone. I'm reading about 1.1 K between ground and five volt. So when I replace this, this board, and in fact, the entire CD player should work. Um, that should be here in a couple days. A little tough to get a reading here, but this is the shift register. And if I go between ground and VCC, you can see this is our short. So replacing this, if I can successfully solder it onto the board, will clear our problem. Okay, so here we are with another good news, bad news scenario on this player. Uh, good news is that the parts came in, or the part came in today. I ordered a 16-pin uh, surface mount shift register. That little guy goes right there, and I was able to get it soldered in. It was a little dicey. You really need to have a microscope to do the best work on this. But I was able to put some solder on the pad for one pin, get it aligned, melt the solder in place to hold it. And once I did that, I was able to solder the other pins. I had some solder bridges, but I found not to even worry about it. When you get done, just run some wick over the uh, pins. It'll take up all the excess and clear out the shorts. So that worked out well. And it powers up now. And I can turn it on. And the problem is that the display is dead. Now this, this spins, it reads the table of contents as I kick the camera, and all the uh, front panel functions work. I thought maybe there was a problem with the backlighting. I could see the backlighting's on if I look in the side. And I programmed a remote to see if I could, if it was just turned off or not bright enough and the remote works and I can see the backlighting off to the side Let me just show you that I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see it But if you look here right in here, you should be able to see the backlighting and the remote Will dim it or turn it off so there's something wrong with the LCD. I did check to make sure that my shift register was getting strobe pulses and was putting out pulses at other pins, and it is. Um, I, had it, I had the orientation right. Fortunately, they marked pin one on the IC. The old one did not have that for whatever reason. Um, but like I said now, all the functions work. I can uh, press play here on the front panel. So anyway, I contacted the owner and said, well, I'm making progress and uh, told him what was going on. He said, I'm thrilled that it's working. He says, I can't see the display from across the room anyway. You can put it together and send it back. We're good. So I'm going to do that. I have one last ditch hope that when I reassemble it, that maybe uh, there will be a ground somewhere when I put all the screws in and the display will start working. Well, I really don't think that's going to happen. So, I'm going to sign this video off now. I thank everyone for watching, and I like giving back to the community that's given me so much. Thanks a lot, folks.